Hey, aloha. Nice to see you. Come aboard. Give you a little tour. My name is Christian. I'm uh, the captain of this nice little boat. Zero and me are sailing around the world. We are here in Alaska and I meet you, Chris. Nice, nice little chance. This is a, um, a catch. It's built in 1974, so it's an old lady, it's older than me. It was in pretty bad condition when uh, I bought her, but we brought her back to life. She sails us around the world. We did a couple thousand miles already, and here we are. We got uh, two masts, the main mast and the mizzen mast over there. We have four sails, so two head sails, one main sail and one mizzen sail in the back. We have plenty of space. You can see the, de the deck area is huge. When I put the dinghy down, we can have a nice dancing party here. Oh, look at this, buddy. Oh, I've been up there a couple hundred times yet, but uh, I've only been up there two times when I was out sailing. When I um, sailed to, started sailing from Hawaii to Alaska, the first time my rudder broke, so I had to go back. And while I was going back, the halyards so or the, the rope where you hoist the sail, the main, uh, the head sail with, broke. And I had to climb up all the way to the top to replace it. It was pretty scary. I was on my own and out there on the ocean to climb up all the way. This is uh, 60 feet above deck. This is a dinghy, same function like the inflatable behind there. I bought this because I really like the shape and the style, but it's not very stable. It's kind of tippy. And the inflatable over there is very more stable. And in Hawaii, we always anchored or tried to anchor almost to save some money on mooring fees or slip fees. So we had to go through the shore break. I mean, Hawaii is known for the waves. And that means the shore break was kind of tricky and it helps to have the inflatable. I mean, it makes a big difference. We are completely self-contained by solar and I have the wind generator. We have three panels. We have one panel over here and two on the radar arch behind, behind that wooden board. And they are 220 watts each, each. So 660 watts solar. And the wind generator is doing 350 watts. And actually I can't present it right now because one of the blades broke, but it's really silent. I mean, you have to listen to it. I have to poke my head out of the, uh, the companion way to see if it's running or not. And that's rare. Most, most of the wind generators are making terrible noise. But with the solar and the wind generator, our batteries are always full. We have uh, four big batteries, four AD batteries, makes it 880 amps. And they're always full. And if the sun is not shining during night and we have uh, a big load like the autopilot running, the wind generator covers it. Yeah, here we are in the cockpit. This is pretty much the area we uh, control the boat. We have the, the helm here, the steering wheel. We have our um, electronics underneath here with the state-of-the-art chart plotter with all the, um, the maps and the charts. Uh, we can run the engine. We have an 80 horsepower engine in here, a diesel engine. Pushed us pretty good with six knots in, in calm conditions, maybe a little more. We have the big setty here. We, um, can run the sheets for the for the mizzen mast from here. Sheets for the main sails are here. Genoer is here, and the stay sail is over here. So we can trim the sails pretty much from here. It's a safe cockpit. We get a um, pretty high solid lifelines. The worst thing which can happen is that somebody goes overboard. In bad condition, it's pretty much exitus. That's it. it. If it's rough out there and somebody goes overboard, I mean really rough like a big storm, it's hard to get it back on. So you have to make sure nobody goes overboard and of course we got uh, life rest and lifelines to you know attach us to the boat. But a high solid fence, I built this, this was all wire before, like, uh, like the ones in front. I built it on solid tubing and that makes it really, really safe really safe feeling here. So we carry a couple surfboards. I'm a surfer um, for a long time. I'm windsurfing, I'm kite surfing, and actually everything which is made with a board I love to do. So we carry this big board over here and have a couple of ones downstairs and you see in the front the windsurf boards. The main reason why we have a big board like this for all the toys. I like toys. So we have the, the dinghy, two dinghies, and we have a um, a life raft over here in a canister. This is made for eight persons and it got some basic equipment inside like fishing gear and a little water package and some food, some basic foods like this military dry food. Uh, a little first aid kit is in there and 
plenty more I don't know out of my you know memory. If shit hits the fan and the, the boat sinks, we throw this overboard. It's it's self inflating, and then we go in there and abandon the boat. Hopefully that never happens. Catch a, a lot of fish, especially on the ocean. Out there is plenty of fish. I caught a when I was three days out of um, Hawaii. I caught a, a 30 pound tuna. And yeah, it's easy. I can set it up. It's a propane. I have the um, the hose over there. I just plug it in and then light it up and have a nice barbecue. Okay, you want to have a quick tour inside? Let's come down. So, the design of the boat is with a pilot house. This is the pilot house. It's a Hudson Force 50. Um, Hudson is a boatyard. William Garden design, an American-Canadian architect, started building boats in um, Taiwan. And the Hudson Boat Yard was in Taiwan, so this is known as a Taiwan clipper. And what I really like on this boat is the big windows. I mean, you, you are um, mostly traveling in an RV, and it's similar. You want to have big windows. And this is what I really like. It's, you can sit here and look outside, and even, you know, the safety thing, you can just check out. If there's something out there without getting out in the cold or in the rain. So this is where we mostly spend our time. Our city to eat, we have the nav station over there. We have the galley over here with, um, you know, a sink and a stove, fridge. Yeah, this is the center of our living here. Um, yeah, we have a guest cabin over here. Actually, at the moment, it doesn't really look like a guest cabin, but I think I go out of the way, you can have a go around. I'm not prepared for gas. You can see I have all my surf equipment here and the, um, the sail covers. I don't put them up when I'm on the ocean and um, here there's not so much UV here to to be worried about it. But this is a nice big bed for two person. We have a little city right behind you and we have a head. Yeah this is pretty much the same like you have in an RV. This is an electric toilet. Sucks out the water from the ocean so it's salt water driven and pumps it into the holding tank. There's actually something on a boat which you don't have on a RV. That's, uh, I mean, you have a stove, but you don't have a gimbal stove. I mean, imagine the boat is rocking when um, we are sailing and we can actually, up to a certain amount of wind and waves, up to a certain amount of uh, boat movement, we can just cook. It's uh, gimbaled, so even if the pot is full of water, it will hold it. Every time we are sailing and we have drinks, we put it over here because nothing happens. That's actually really cool. Yeah, of course, a sink and plenty of storage room. We have a big fridge here, holds all our fresh food. It's a front load and top load and drawers for, for our stuff. So this is nothing really special about that. Now we leave in pilot house, go down into the salon. Say hello to my friends. Say hi guys. Hello. Aloha. Traveling up from Hawaii. <laughs> That's why we're all bundled up. <laughs> yeah. I met these guys in, uh, when I was in Hawaii on Maui and they're doing a motorcycle tour, 5,000 miles, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were the same area, so I gave them a, a bed for tonight. It's so cold outside. <laughs> Sleep in your saddle. Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, at the moment, it's a little packed with all the stuff, but this is um, just another room, a living room. The luxury of this boat is we have the salon here and the pilot house, so we can um, get out of our way. Somebody can sit here, read or watch a movie and I can do all whatever I want to do over there. And so it's plenty of room to get out of our way, especially I'm usually sailing with my girlfriend and you know, sometimes you need to be close and sometimes you need to be a little on a different, on a distance. So that's, that's good on this boat. Good for Alaska is this diesel heater. That's uh, making it really nice, warm and cozy here. It's uh, icing for the Guys who are interested in any specs, it's burning two and a half gallon per 24 hours, something like this. So it's pretty effective. Over here, we come into the captain quarters. This is our cabin. We have a big bed here, lots of storage underneath, a big um, closet over here. So it's a really huge one. We have another head in the front here. We have another sink here, we have a um, walk-in shower and actually when we bought the boat we had a toilet over here and 
this is little, this is tiny room. I didn't want to toilet here and we don't use it too much. So I built it in here. It's a spare toilet and it's underneath here. So this is a manual one with a um, big pump handle here. And we just use this when, when uh, the other one is broken or we have gas. Yeah, and in the front you can see there's the anchor chain, that's our chain locker. We have a big bunch of chains, 300 feet of chain for the main anchor and 150 feet of rope. And another 150 feet of rope and 60 feet of chain for the spare, for the secondary anchor. So we mostly use uh, the main anchor. That's um, nothing you will know from your RV, but we have a Rockner anchor, which is the new modern technology anchor and it holds great so i never had any problems with that <laughs>